I, I would say, obviously, there is that huge element of luck, but I, I believe that we make our own luck to some degree. And so what made the luck for me was that I have always had a very broad set of interests. I've always um, been very, very curious and, and chased lots of rabbits in terms of if something interests me, I will go and I will learn about it. And maybe I'll even take a class in it. Maybe I'll even take a degree in it. I don't know. And so uh, I was a university professor and, and I quit academia and came to Precision Nutrition. And not only did I have this academic background, but I had started in a much different place than I finished. So I had this, again, broad range of interests, broad range of expertise, um, all the skills that come with being an academic. And so I was able to use all of these skills at some point, and I continue to do so, and I continue to gather new skills. It's been 10 years. And so, I mean, luck comes to people who hustle and make it happen. And I don't just mean push to get things done or try to achieve goals, but make but make yourself lucky, right? If you yeah. have five interests, there's a good chance that you'll find connections in more areas than if you have one interest. I mean, it's almost like a numbers game in a way. So I think for for us as a collective and me personally, having diverse interests and being very curious about the world and always working to learn and improve my skills, it's all paid off because there are very few skills that I have never used. Like it's amazing what comes in handy. When I started my undergrad, I was in fine arts, visual arts and film. And that translates into talking to designers about how should our website look? Uh, it, it translates into creating curriculum materials. It translates into even something as stupid as creating nice PowerPoints. I think if you ask almost any quote unquote productive person, they will tell you that they're not that productive. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> feel that way. Um, uh -huh. For me, one of the biggest changes, uh, helpful changes was coming to terms with myself. Um, and this is this is true. I mean, I talked before about our how our eating uh, programs work and that they're reality based. Um, but coming to terms with myself and how I need to work, what I require to be my best self was essential. So I realized I could not break up my time into a whole bunch of little tiny fragments. I can't do a bunch of random phone calls or meetings or, or have these little micro interruptions all the time. I can't constantly be on chat or anything like that. I, I can't even really um, answer email all that often because for me, uninterrupted stretches of concentration time are what I need to, to do my best as our interspersing periods of intellectual output with movement. So I might work for a couple of hours and then get outside for an hour and then work for a couple of hours and then do something else physical for an hour. So I need I need that rhythm. And I know that about myself. And, and I've come to terms with that over the years. And it's been a bit of a struggle because that is not the prevailing mode of working in Western culture at this point, um, yeah. especially if you have a knowledge worker kind of job. Uh, yeah. The idea is, oh, hey, sit down at your computer and grind some stuff out for eight or 10 hours a day. Well, first of all, I think that's impossible for a human to do. But um, in general, it, it definitely, definitely does not work for for me. So so just kind of stepping back and looking at that reality and saying, this is what I need. It may not be what anyone else needs, um, but it's what I need was like really job number one. Um, job number two was, again, facing reality, getting very real about distractions and what is sucking my time, what is sucking my energy, what is uh, taking my attention away and trying to eliminate as many of those things as possible, like getting extremely aggressive <laughs> about it. I call it ruthless clarity, getting very clear. What am I doing? Uh, what do I need? And what is taking away from that? And it's amazing how many things can take you away from useful and productive work, things you don't even realize, oh, even things that feel productive, like housework, right? Like, oh, you know, I got a few minutes, I'll just throw in a load of laundry. And then 20 minutes later, you're folding the socks and you're like, ah, damn it, I just lost like a half an hour of work. Yeah. Um, so so some of them are tricky. Some of those uh, distractors can be tricky. They're not all like binge watching Netflix or, or you know, yeah. wasting time on Facebook. Like some of them can be like answering email. Well, that feels productive. Well, it's actually much lower on the productivity scale than and an hour of like really focused, intense um, reflection on something. So um, recognizing what your distractors are, but especially looking for those super sneaky distractors that look like they're being productive. Those I think are the worst and the trickiest. And in terms of productivity, I have also been thinking lately about how producing more is not necessarily the end game either, right? Like, so an analogy with exercise is something like, if I want to build muscle, I can't just go and work out all the time. I need to recover, right? Like it is the process of recovery that actually is what builds muscle or makes me fitter, makes me better, stronger. So 
I think in North American culture in particular, we're obsessed with productivity, we're obsessed with output, but you need to have input. Like I can't just spend, 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 spend out of my bank account without making some money to put in there. <laughs> um, and the same thing, I can't produce, produce, produce. I can't create without incubation. Um, it, it just doesn't work that way. So I think um, it's also easy to get caught up in like thinking that producing more is always better and not asking yourself, okay, what has to be going in to the cognitive or psychological or life bank account in order for me to be making those withdrawals. Uh, like I can't produce out of an empty fuel tank. I just, I'm mixing metaphors all over the place, but I can't produce out of nothing. You can't just output, output, output constantly. So if, if you're having trouble with your output, with your productivity, look at your input. Like, are you sleeping? Are you recovering? Are you engaging in, in reflection time? Are you engaging with, tr with other people in a truly collaborative way? Like when was the last real good conversation that you had with someone? That's a great question because that's, one place where ideas definitely come from, but you have to be doing it either face to face or like this, you know, in some kind of real time way. In general, it doesn't work to just kind of have one off asynchronous chat communication with other people and expect to get anything out of it. Sometimes it happens, it's a happy accident, but it's actually a lot of the analog parts of life, the non digital parts of life that generate true productivity. Um, I don't know if you know who Saul Orwell is, he's the guy who's yeah. made himself legendary with the cookie party. But he talks about how he just likes to go walking every day and he doesn't listen to podcasts. He just walks and he thinks and he reflects. I mean, you couldn't have a more basic analog technique than that for productivity. Like, you know, that's, that's human beings pretty much as soon as we had a conscious brain, that's what we were doing. So uh, a lot of, you know, people get all hung up and like, oh, I need this productivity tool. I need an app. No, you don't need an app. You probably need to go for a walk outside. You probably need to go back to pen and paper and the most analog, non-digital experiences possible. If I get four hours of really good concentration, really good focus concentration, I high five myself. Now I'm doing other hours of not like of adequate <laughs> concentration, but my magic time is in the morning. I'm a morning person. If I get up and I sit down and I don't check Facebook, I don't check email, I don't check chat or anything like that. If I work during that period and I get four hours of like really solid, amazing um, honed in communication or, or, or uh, productivity, I, I'm like, awesome. I feel great about that. And then I can work as many more other hours as I want. But at my peak, I'm only going to get four hours of really, really good stuff. And some days it's only going to be two hours of really, really good stuff. If what I'm doing is so cognitive demanding that it just burns through the fuel. So for people listening, I mean, the eight hour day where you expect to be super productive for eight hours, not going to happen. The human brain just doesn't work that way. I have a highly <laughs> productive brain. My brain has no problem making stuff, but it cannot run at top speed for more than a few hours a day. It just, it's just too costly.